Hello, and welcome back to Pokemon Ecology. Today, we'll be looking at Aeron, Laeron, and Agron, who were much more interesting than I thought they would be. In this video, I talk less about anatomy than I normally do, but the video is long and I do touch on pretty much everything I wanted to say. Also, the visuals are going to be more comedic, but the audio will be just the same. Also, down in the comments, let me know which of these videos you'd like to see next. Analysis of the fossil Pokemon, Sneasel, Sneasler, and Weavile, Yanma and Yanmega, and Sandshrew and his Alolan counterpart. I would offer the option to do it on some of those <clears throat> new Pokemon, but they, uh, spoiler, I'm not going to say it. With that out of the way, let's get into things. Aaron's body is encased in iron armor. The real skin may be this gray coloring consistently shown to be underneath the armor, but it's also possible that this is iron scale covered skin, thusly somewhat counting his armor, as it's shown to be flexible yet structured and sturdy. We know it has to be at least penetrable though, as Agrons proudly show off their battle scars. The armor being shed or lost when dead is reminiscent of shells being lost during the Ordovician or Cambrian periods, falling onto the sea floor and creating stone composed of its material. In this case, it will be deposits of iron buried with potentially iron-rich corpses for later Aeron, Laeron, and Agron to eat. It's also possible that the heavy digging done by the Aeron line causes the terrain to often collapse and shuffle, moving around to new and old mineral deposits as well as new and old corpses of iron-rich Pokémon like Skarmory, Aeron, Mawile, and others. As with most Pokémon, the teeth are neglected. It's possible that the iron shell creates a beak-like structure we might see in turtles, that would aid them in bursting iron into more edible sized chunks. Laron and Agron have simple claws that would aid in digging and fighting, meaning these claws are likely not just made of keratin, as is the case with most creatures. Aeron having iron stub growths covering its feet leads me to believe that the claws are, in fact, iron protections growing on top of simple fingers. Related, how would Aeron dig for its food? Do they need a Laron or Agron parent to help them find food? The front of their armor is shovel shaped, so it's possible that they use this edge to scrape away dirt in search for iron. The plates on top of Laron are reminiscent of Stegosaurus's plates. The issue is that we aren't sure why Stegosaurus had these plates. The most common belief is temperature control, but as I'll bring up later, that seems unlikely for Laron. Another possibility would be threat display or defense, which seems most likely considering it's built upon a defensive layer. Now onto the production of the steel body. It's very unlikely that steel would form naturally, or even in an organism's body. It isn't as unreasonable as it could be in this particular case. Steel production requires two major elements, high oxygen and high temperature. These high temperatures are beyond anything reasonably producible by an organism's digestive enzymes, over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. But this is Pokemon, and Agron can learn flamethrower. One could assume it learns it through TM by learning how to output the heat present in its belly as fire breath. Regarding the oxygen though, Aeron, Laron, and Agron all have conspicuous holes on their armor. These are glaring defense issues and would need a very important reason to be present in spite of such. It's possible that these holes allow them to take in much more oxygen than they could with their nose, fueling the steel production occurring in their stomach or another organ unique to the Aeron line or some steel types. I theorize two major ways that they would get all of the oxygen that they would need. Either, as mentioned, through these holes, which would be reminiscent of salamanders in real life being able to breathe through their skin, or lizards in real life use their upper arm muscles to breathe, needing to do it manually. Could this be the case with the Aeron line? Maybe. It would explain the huge musculature we see in Agron being able to carry trees and significant amounts of topsoil to their ruined mountain homes, which I'll talk about later. As for the production of heat. Most lizards, as most know, are cold-blooded, meaning they don't produce their own heat. Kinda. Heat production is a byproduct of energy production from food as well as a byproduct of many of the chemical actions going on in their body, such as the maintenance of ion concentration in cells. Basically, staying hydrated is harder for mammals, so it takes more energy for us. Thusly, to save heat, mammals have a more central body structure while lizards have a more flat or elongated body structure to have more body exposed to heat sources. Think of it like microwaving spaghetti versus microwaving a hot dog. Bringing it back to Agron, Laron and Agron show some exposed skin beyond the armor, meaning they probably do draw some heat from the sun. However, considering their bodies are pretty lumped together, they may draw sufficient heat from the aforementioned steel production organs in the center of their bodies. On to diet. Obviously, this line is going to have a very big energy requirement. Fortunately, they're reptiles. Unfortunately, they still need a great deal of fuel. 
Reptiles normally need only 2% of what a mammal of the same size would need to eat, but these guys are literally funding a fire in their stomachs. Likely, they act as apex predators in an area, probably to the point of even driving out other predators, as in eating them, to leave more for themselves. However, as I'll talk about later, this may not be the case. The habitat modification, though, that Agron does, possibly is to repair animal-friendly habitats so that they can get access to more fleshy creatures, which again, I'll talk about in the Prey and Predator section. Iron Ore is another big meal for them, meaning they need to expend energy digging. In one episode of Pokemon, we see that they live in a large anthill-looking tunnel as a civilization of Aeron. Behavioral implications aside for now, this may show that the cave system is one that's been in use by Aeron for generations, meaning that digging for iron is far easier, and cave-ins caused by digging would expose more iron. It's likely that Aeron scavenge for food, avoiding too many fights. Again, as I'll talk about soon, they have some pretty formidable predators. Laron may go after the predators that they face, using the plates on the back to scare off fights they don't think they can win. In terms of what they might scavenge, some good examples are dead Corvusquires, Corviknights, Skarmories, Mawiles, Steelixes as well. Basically, steel-bodied Pokemon that are far too big for an Aeron to eat on their own, let alone fight when they're alive. Here is a big list of possible meals for them, with some exceptions. While Magnemite is described to be made of iron here, which does retroactively mean that the use of the word steel is intentional, is only a Pokemon Legends Arceus entry, so it's possible that this is a retcon. Mawile is said to be very aggressive and very predatorial, so this is probably more of a predator to the Aeron than anything else, leading them to maybe only scavenge. Golbats are said to drink themselves so full of blood that they become immobile. Nose pass are magnetic, so it's likely that they have iron in their bodies used to control that magnetism. And Ferrothorn is a literal iron plant, which may help provide fuel, especially due to enzyme-coated thorns, which would help in the digestion of itself. Carbink is clearly not iron, but stones in which diamonds are found in real life are part iron. And Carcoal is likely excellent fuel for Aeron needing to fund their furnaces. However, it may also consume Aeron, as it would be easy for them to burn through their shells. Now onto Aeron being prey. Drillbur and Excadrill with their metal claws would likely have no issue getting in through Aeron. Axew is a possibility their tusks are said to be very tough. Nosepass is another case of a prey that may be a predator, as the Emerald Dex entry hints that it goes after a magnetic Pokemon. Corvusquire, Corviknight, and Skarmory may also go after Aeron, as they have steel bodies that would need to be funded with steel, of course. Durant also has a steel body, and this may also be a predator and prey relationship. I'd imagine one isolated Durant doesn't stand a chance against a horde of Aeron, and vice versa. There are a lot of fighting types around Aeron's habitat as well, and these may serve as fuel sources. Muscles, of course, require a lot of energy to operate and be built, so it's possible that Aeron would want to go after these to fund the furnaces in their body. And of course, Aeron's hard shell was likely developed in order to actually fight off all of these Pokemon, resulting in, accidentally, consumption by Mawile and Nosepass due to the iron that they now wear. Now in terms of Aeron to Aeron interactions, we're going to start with mating. In terms of choosing a mate, this line likely goes one of three major ways. They may choose the one with the most scars on their armor, because they do proudly show them off, and it would show basically ferocity and ability to live in a fight. They might choose the one with the biggest armor adornments. Laron's Stegosaurus plates and Agron's horns are a good example of this. Or finally, they choose the Laron or Agron with the prettiest territory. Laron are said to nest next to mineral spring fountains, which would be key in choosing a mate. And Agron are said to repair damages caused by natural disasters, which says that they do actually care about the beauty of their habitat, whether this is for, as I said earlier, attracting food, or maybe it's for attracting a mate, in the same way that a Merb might do so with a nest. Moving on to territory, do Laeron and Agron migrate out of their territories to find mates? Do they yell to attract them, perhaps? Maybe like bears, they leave after a certain age to find a new area to claim as their own, and they may meet someone, established or unestablished, on their hike. And finally, possible colony living, which I very briefly mentioned earlier. The line is stated to be very territorial, but we see Aeron living in a huge group in the anime. Could this be a sort of colony of them, produced by one or a couple Agron breeding pairs? Granite Cave is shown in the anime to be vaguely like an animal series of underground living tunnels, so it's not impossible that they do form small colonies. And finally, their interactions with humans. 
Starting off, they're essentially metallic raccoons, except they eat entire dump trucks. If you think raccoons getting into your garbage is bad, imagine if they eat the trash can instead. To be honest, I'm not sure what the best management practice would be for this, especially at construction sites. Would they have guard dogs, maybe? Larons also raid mines and cause serious issues there. How do humans get anywhere in the Pokemon world? And the whole line likely poses problems for hikers. I can't imagine an Agron would be too happy about a human presence in its territory. But maybe it's more like brown bears, where they sometimes decide that a human needs to die. Then of course, battling. Agron is a massive defensive tank that is absolutely beloved by many for its appearance and also capability in taking and dishing out plenty of damage. And finally, warriors. Laron and Agron are seen being used as warriors in Lucario and the Mystery of Mew, further cementing it as the best Pokemon movie. And that was Agron, certainly much cooler than I thought he was going to be. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below, leave a subscribe, drop me a like, and check out my Patreon please. If I get enough subscribers, I'll be able to do this full time and videos will be pumped out like no one's business. And I promise, I have a lot of videos in the pipeline. Also, don't forget to vote in that poll as to what's next. Thanks, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.